iScience 10. In this video, we're going to be looking at specialized cells in leaves. Ultimately, multicellular organisms like us, like dogs, like cats, like birds that you can hear in the background, and like plants, all of us are made up of many different specialized cell types. So let's just take a look at a, uh, at a tomato plant here. Now, these different specialized cells are organized into tissues. For example, there's many special tissues that actually bring, well, the roots, for example. And then there's this tissue called xylem that's going to bring water from the roots all the way up into the leaf. And, of course, tissues get organized into organs. The leaf is actually an organ. Now, I've got one right here. So we're going to start by taking a look at a leaf from a tomato plant. And then I've also got just some lettuce leaves you could, that you could get in the store. Ultimately, this organ, this leaf, is capable of doing photosynthesis. It's capable of taking carbon dioxide from the air, water, again, that comes from the roots all the way up into the leaf. Take those two, use energy from the sun, combine it to make glucose or sugar and oxygen. And of course, the leaf is giving off oxygen right now. And of course, that, that sugar, the sugar, the plant needs it for cellular respiration inside of the plant. You know, down there in the roots, actually, it's using active transport to draw in nutrients, to draw in minerals, to help it uh, create an osmotic pressure so that it can get, get water into the plant the cool thing about water is it's coming up into the plant. The plant actually takes excess water. So it's got lots. Because when you want to run a, a good chemical equation, and that's what we've got here, you know, CO2 plus H2O giving us sugar or glucose and oxygen. When you want to run a good chemical equation, you need a lot, you need something in excess. And this is what the plant does. It gets lots of water in excess. You can see we've recently watered them. So yeah, we're going to take a look at, at six different cell types within uh, a, 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 a within a, within the leaf. And so let's get started here right now. First of all, on top, the upi, the upi, the upper epidermis. Now the upper epidermis, the leaf, and you can feel it here, has got a waxy cuticle. Now take a look at the picture here. Here are the specialized cells of the leaf. Let's start with the upper epidermis. So you just saw that picture there. The upper epidermis, again, has got a cuticle or a waxy covering. And ultimately, its job is to protect the leaf. But secondly, to let sunlight in and to get to the palisade cells, another specialized cell. Let's take a look at a picture of those. So the palisade cells, if you look carefully inside of those, they've got lots of chloroplasts. Those chloroplasts are full of chlorophyll. That's what's making this leaf green, okay? So if you think about it, every time you see a leaf, the reason why it's green is because of chlorophyll, and the chlorophyll is inside chloroplasts. And those palisade cells, that's specifically the type of cell that's full of chloroplasts, they drive this reaction. They drive photosynthesis. Okay, so the palisade cell does photosynthesis, producing glucose and oxygen. But where and how does it get CO2 and H2O into the leaf, right? The leaf's a pretty small space. Believe it or not, there's a kind of a spongy, and you can feel that when you squeeze on a leaf. You can feel how it's a bit spongy. There's a spongy tissue. Now you can almost see it here especially in a big thick lettuce leaf this kind of spongy it's got a lot of air spaces oh air spaces sponge right so that the spongy tissue gives space for co2 also for the water and also to give off the oxygen so you know the leaf is it's like a lung right it's a very special organ that the plant has that's like a lung and it, it has to take in co2 and breathe out oxygen. Also, it's actually letting out water. Believe it or not, this plant is letting out water right now through its, uh, through the leaves. Okay, so, so far we've got the upper epidermis. Let's take a look at the picture again.
We've got the upper epidermis. Take a look at it. We've got the palisade cells. Take a look at those. We've got the spongy tissue cells. Take a look at those. Next key thing is the transport system, the xylem and phloem. The purpose of xylem and phloem, and you can kind of see it here. Uh, basically, I've cut this open. And xylem and phloem, xylem moves water all the way up and through, see these veins? These are xylem and phloem veins. Xylem is moving water all the way up from the roots into the leaf, and the phloem takes the sugar to the rest of the plant. Again, phloem, pH, so fill like phloem, fill like sugar. <laughs> so that's, um, that's kind of how I remember what each of them does, because you do need to remember what each of them does. But it makes sense, right? that the plant needs a way to transport water. That's through the xylem. And of course, the sugar is through the phloem. Again, take a look at the picture of the xylem and phloem here. All right. So now we've got to get the CO2 into the leaf. The way that that happens, and you can't see them, they're super small, it's called stoma, and a plural is stomata. They're little doorways. But the only way those doorways open is with guard cells. So stomata and guard cells, they work together to open the door to the leaf. to let CO2 in, to also let oxygen out, and actually through the stoma, also water, excess water. Because remember this reaction right here, the only way to do a good reaction is to have excess of something, and the plant wants to have excess water. It takes it in, lets it out. So the stomata and guard cells, here how they, here's how they basically work together. As the guard cells get lots of water, they open up. And once they open up, well, they expand, sorry. The guard cells expand as soon as they get lots of water inside of them. When they expand, it opens up the stomata. The stomata is just like a little hole in the leaf. Opens it up and lets the CO2 in, lets the O2 out. So when that stomata is, is open, I mean, you can think about it, the cuticle here, it's very smooth, it's protecting the leaf. How could anything get through there? Oh yeah, there has to be little doorways. That's what the stomata cells are. And the only way they open is when there's excess water. And of course, water is needed for cellular respiration, right? You can't do this reaction right here, cellular respiration, without having water. You can't do it without water. So therefore, when the plant has excess water, the guard cells swell. Here, take a look at the picture right here where the guard cells are swelling. Okay, so they swell open because they've got excess water. And then basically it allows, well, allows photosynthesis to happen. All right, so those are the key cells of the leaf. Again, quick overview of the epidermis. It's got its cuticle nice and waxy. Palisade cells, that's why this leaf is green. That's doing photosynthesis. Spongy tissue is giving air space so that, you know, we can actually have the CO2 and H2O, H2, the CO2 and the O2 gas, uh, you know, enough space also for water. Xylem and phloem, that's the vascular tissue. That is the transport, just the vascular is just a fancy name for transport, the transport tissue. Xylem basically bringing the, uh, the water, phloem taking the sugars to the rest of the plant, and stomata and guard cells working together to provide the doorway for the gas exchange for carbon dioxide to get in and for oxygen to get out. Okay, science 10, that's all for now.